Hello, everyone. My name is Yu Ting Tai. I'm from the research group of Delta Urbanism. My PhD research is about how to understand the changing values of water in Delta cities, which can contribute to future strategies for resilience. Previously, we have considered the flooding issue in Delta regions as a challenge to resilience. However, besides safety, water plays an important role in multiple dimensions with economic, social, and environmental values. For instance, water brings vitality and attractiveness to urban space and carries diverse spatial functions. However, rapid urbanization has brought enormous challenges, such as increasing flood risk and decreasing environmental quality. The challenge is even higher in developing countries. In this context, Resilience means urban planning and design should integrate and balance diverse values of water. And this kind of diversity needs to be understood in the local context. In this lecture, I would like to show you how a resilient urban system worked in ancient China with an empirical study. Located in the Purva Delta, Guangzhou or Canton is one of the most prosperous waterfront cities with a history of over 2,000 years. From the images of the past and present, you can see tremendous spatial transformations within a century. In ancient China, feng shui thought played an important role in city planning. The main idea for site planning of a city is either at the foot of great mountains or on broad plains, neither too high to get fresh water not too low to avoid extra drainage works. Following these principles, Guangzhou was originally settled between the mountains and the Po River. Crowned as the blood circulation of the city, a canal network was established in the 12th century for the functions of ecosystem, navigation, drainage, water supply, and military defense. The canal system was constructed according to the natural landscape. Rain and waste water was drained through ditches to the six major canals. This was then diverted to the moats around the city wall before finally discharging into the river and the sea. Besides canals, there were dense streams connected with nature ponds and wetlands in the western suburb outside the city wall. Later on, 18 commercial streets were developed along the west moat, and trading centers emerged in the riverfront. The whole water system not only enabled the city to avoid flooding, but also functioned for social economic activities and recreation. However, this resilient system has collapsed when most of the canals have been covered up in the process of industrialization and urbanization since the 1950s. The decreasing surface water not only brings flood issues, but also takes away the cultural identity of a historical water city. Since the 2000s, the municipal government has decided to reopen the previously covered canals as a part of urban regeneration. The project of reopening the Lichi Bay canals in the western part of the historical center is a pilot redevelopment project to recall the watery landscape of Guangzhou. The Lichi Bay used to be famous for its natural landscape with wetlands, lychee trees, and the lifestyle of floating dwellers. You can find the beautiful scenery of water landscape in poems and paintings. It has also become a strong collective memory of the local people. However, being a low-lying territory with an increasingly impervious surface, the surrounding area has always suffered from urban flooding. Driven by the hosting of the 16th Asian Games in 2010, the municipal government initiated the Lichi Bay Culture and Leisure Zone Plan. The main idea was to bring the canal back to the city, combined with flood mitigation, touristic, 
culture and leisure functions. However, the project was very controversial due to its high cost and the large displacement of local people. Besides, the artificial water landscape couldn't function like the original nature water system due to concrete pavement. So the ecological value and flood mitigation is limited. Now we are facing two main challenges. One is urbanization, which leads to huge exposure of population and access to flood risk. Another one is climate change. Both of them create great uncertainties for the future. So we need to develop a new model of urbanization, which can turn these challenges and uncertainties into new opportunities. Now we can conclude that it is essential to develop resilience thinking with the understanding of our history. Future strategies should not only integrate different values of water for a robust economy, a vital society, and a livable environment, but also deal with the changing contexts and great uncertainties. By reviewing the historical transitions of the urban system and its capacity to deal with future shocks, you can start to think about the following questions. What can we learn from history about resilience? How to deal with the changing socio-economic context and new constraints? Is resilience more complex in developing countries where economic development is given priority?